for eight years, we, Bruce and Susan Carlson from Laguna Vista, Texas, have been fighting for justice in Minnesota, Washington County Family Court for our grandson, our daughter, and us. We were asked by our lawyer at the time seven years ago when we were being sued again, how much it was worth for the father to go away forever, $25,000? After several hearings, the same lawyer who was an acquaintance of the judge said, wouldn't it be better to love and nurture Colton and have him put up with the abuse on the weekends than to lose custody totally? We still believed in the justice system at that time and could not believe this was said to us. Later, the lawyer acted like the conversation about the $25,000 never happened. The whole custody case and lawsuits were in this court because the father lied under oath about his residence. The judge still refused to release the case. We now know the most experienced, wisest lawyer in the country would not necessarily win a case in Minnesota, even if they were 100% right. We are filming in Texas because of the orders issued by Judge Gary Schur in Washington County, Minnesota. Minnesota gives total freedom to judges so Judge Schur can make any order against us for anything. When we were desperately trying to find out about accountability for things that were happening, the Judicial Board of Review told us that there was only a slap on the hand, if that, for a judge who wrecked lives. We are retired senior citizens with Bruce having had six strokes. The first stroke happened when Bruce was assistant principal and the superintendent in Port Wing, Wisconsin said not to report the abuse that Colton's preschool teacher reported that his grandson told her had happened with his dad. It was his, Bruce's job to make a mandatory report. Now we know there is no real law. We have spent over 55 years totally, total together teaching children in White Bear Lake, Minnesota and Port Wing, Wisconsin. It has been over 600 days since we have been allowed any communication with our grandson Colton. We were a constant loving and caring part of his life, even daily volunteering in his four years of school at that time. In court, the guardian ad litem said that our daughter had to pay a lot of money for a supervisor. So she blockaded a qualified minister to supervise in which our daughter would trade her nursing skill in a facility. Our daughter paid over $1,000 a month for four to six hours a week in a supervised visit, such as a criminal would be required, as well as $554 a month child support for the last year while a full-time student. The guardian ad litem refused to stop the supervision, and the supervisor recommended by Washington County corrupted the notes, lied, and refused to give receipts for our daughter's 1099 form. Consequently, they have kept her from her son since March 13, 2012. She gets phone calls sometimes. The father is allowed to break the court order whenever he chooses. She would have lost custody immediately for the things the father did since January 2011 when he attained full custody. She never alienated the father, but the court enforces parental alienation towards her, even though she has done nothing but be a good mother. We never spoke to the guardian ad litem, Jill Adrizzo. She never called us, but she ordered we were not to communicate with at all with our grandson. It was her educated opinion. It was in the best interest of the child. When we were asked for her dismissal, she got a lawyer. In legal documents and verbally, she fabricated facts constantly. With the judge's final court order, we cannot even make a complaint against the guardian ad litem. And if we do, we may have to pay for everyone's expenses, legal, etc. We cannot communicate with Colton. A postcard could send us to jail with the freedom Congress gives to judges. We are supposed to take another psych evaluation by the court's cho chosen psychiatrist with a sliding scale of cost, even though we took one by a highly reputable psychiatrist which showed us to be quite normal, although too trusting. The fraternal grandfather is allowed to be a caregiver, but not required any psych evaluation in spite of being an ex-convict. Incredibly, in print in the judge's court order, we are not allowed any information from any of the reporting to the courts, denying us the American Freedom of Information Act. We are losing our house after $200,000 legal expenses in Minnesota. We have been stalked, harassed, identity frauded, vandalized, robbed, lied about by corrupt lawyers and corrupt sheriff's departments, exploited by lawyers because we care enough to right the horrendous wrongs in the court, child protection systems, police and sheriff departments, exchange centers, parent expediters, supervisors, and we never did anything wrong. This September, the guardian ad litem asked for dismissal. The order said she had completed her job, the best interest of the child. While his Catholic school kindergarten teacher with 30 plus years of teaching waited to speak on mandatory reports of Colton 
telling her what happened while on visits with his father and grandfather, the judge closed the hearing at three days before she or other witnesses for Colton could speak. Thus, the appeal could not contain those facts. A first child interview was professionally done in Douglas County, Wisconsin, with them stating they believed Colton's statements of abuse. They also said they felt there had been no coaching on the maternal side. There was a statement in court, but it was ignored by the judge and covered up by both sides of the lawyers, who only make money on an open case. An interview was conducted by Ramsey County, Minnesota Sheriff's Department, which broke many rules of interviewing a child. The detective involved said she had feelings about this and continued to lie, accuse, but never actually talked to anyone involved on the maternal side. She spoke to inadmissible witnesses on the father's side. These statements were printed and used over and over. They were shared with the Forest Lake, Minnesota police, who then did not bother to follow up on an abuse report, actually telling the reporter that the father was going to get custody anyway. Old reports from a two and three year old Colton were used instead of recent six year old statements of fact. We told Colton to tell the truth, it would set him free. It locked him up instead. Colton misses his five-year-old puppy and brother, and we know he misses all his friends and family that the guardian ad litem ordered he have no contact with. He asked on a call to his mother, why can't I have my old life back? What did I do wrong? Another call he whispered to his mother, please never give up fighting. Colton, we love you. Anyone who hears this, please tell him. We won't give up hope or stop fighting. Congress, do your part and make this America again. Looking the other way makes you just as guilty of abuse as the one who commits the abuse.